For years now, the Honda Jazz has been just another little hatchback, driven by old people. And my dad. In my very first video, I talked about how it's actually a lot quicker and more fun than you think. But after all, this was the first car I'd ever driven, so of course I thought it was fast. Thankfully, the second gen Jazz Sport I did review got a 5 speed auto with paddles that did genuinely make it more fun than the earlier CVT versions. But sadly, a manual option was reserved only for the dreary 1.3 litre base model. Until now! Check it out! A Jazz with a 6 speed manual transmission tied to the better 1.5 litre engine with 97 fire breathing kilowatts. Now that's a package that should get your heart racing. Maybe. But in all seriousness, I actually think this is a fantastic little car, and today I'm going to show you why. The appearance is far more in line with what a hot hatch should look like. It's got an aggressive design with striking LED lights and a diffuser thing going on at the back. The wheels are really the part I'm not a huge fan of, but thankfully you can get them upgraded for some nice Mugen MD8s from factory. With the better wheels on it, I think it looks just right. Not too crazy like the Type R, but sporty enough. Now I know, I know, the engine is small. But for an NA 1.5 it cracks out a decent amount of power, and it really is the only engine Honda makes today that still carries the magic of the small VTEC motors from the 90s. It's relatively high revving and has the proper dual overhead cam performance I VTEC system, which by the way you can definitely hear if you slap an intake on it. Despite the compression ratio of 11.5 to 1, the same as my Integra believe it or not, it runs on 91. Therefore, I'm sure if you tuned it to run on a higher octane fuel, more power could be scraped out of this little engine to bring it up closer to what you'd expect to get out of a B16. And of course, there's always the case one. But anyway, I'm rambling on about what this car could be, not what it is. So as I said, it makes 97 kilowatt and 155 newton meters of torque, and it's paired with a short ratio six-speed manual transmission. Power is sent, of course, as with all Hondas, through the front wheels onto 16-inch 185mm wide tyres or 17-inch 205mm wide tyres if you go for the Mugen alloys. The interior has a lot of great features that make this a very livable car. It's got heaps of adjustment in the seats and steering wheel, cruise control, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, automatic climate control and Bluetooth hands-free foam. And of course it has the classic jazz practicality. The seats fold down completely flat or even flip up to create a child's play tunnel in the back of your car. The boot, even with the seats up, is very spacious and there's heaps of room in the back seats to bring all your lanky mates. So basically the Jazz RS is a cool looking, practical and feature rich little hatchback that I'm sure has handling and performance potential with a few simple mods. For now though, let's see how it drives. So, what do I think? Well, I've been banging on this whole time about how it's fun to drive and how it's got a great little manual transmission and that there's more power to be had out of this engine. And, uh, well, I wouldn't be saying them if they weren't true, were they? I really do think that this is a very fun little car to drive. If I were to start off with any small complaints to get them out of the way, um, the clutch, I've gotten used to it now because I've driven it quite a lot, but... Um, I can agree that when I first got in it was a little annoying because the point where it suddenly springs out is the point where it engages so on that point it's a bit kind of tricky to get it to do what you want it to do but over time you get used to it and now I'm at the point where it's just it, it doesn't bother me and the other possible complaint would be the steering is good but it has no weight to it you know you can turn it with one finger for goodness sake it's like light as and so as a result, yeah, there's not really any feeling to it. So you're just kind of guessing when you go around corners how far to turn the wheel. But it really is staggering though, eh? By driving the manual version of this, it feels like a completely different car to the CVT automatic. You have engine braking, it feels substantially faster, it's way more responsive when you put your foot down. It's like this has a significantly larger engine. So yeah, I guess to summarize, the city driving experience has more than enough torque to pull you around at low RPM, you know, cruising up a hill, third gear, want to accelerate a bit, just put your foot down and it responds, right? It obviously doesn't quite have the torque that you get from a turbocharged car, but it's more than enough for just booting around town, right? At no point do I feel like I'm having to change down all the time to get it to accelerate like I want to. It'll just happily do whatever in any gear and it's it's perfectly easy to drive. Steering is obviously light, which makes it sort of vague, but it does make it very easy in tight spots. Come on, turn off, turn off, turn off. Come on, come on, come on. Nope, they're not doing it. Alrighty, you're getting overtaken. 
Anyway, while we are stuck behind this very annoying Pajero, how's the ride? Because this is obviously a fairly bumpy road. It's great actually, and it doesn't have enormous wheels, they're only 16s, and so as a result, they soak up the little bumps nicely. And the suspension is firm enough where it by no means feels roly poly through turns, right? I still remember a scene in my mum's car where I shook the wheels, you know, in one of her fits, and you'll see what I mean. Yeah. This is not like that at all. It feels very planted, um, it doesn't really rock around, and the suspension is supple enough where it feels comfortable but not like you know annoyingly wallowy and so on right it still has some sporting credentials the jazz is mighty alrighty now let's see how she drives okay the first thing I'm noticing <laughs> I've tipped the seat back a bit so that you guys can see where I'm going without just looking at the sun visor and it doesn't hold you in quite as well as I remember but the power is like it's not half bad you know like I certainly wouldn't call it quick but it's it, it's there right like I drove down here in the Civic Type R not very long ago and that thing has so much power it's not funny this turn it in she handles well This car is a lot of fun, man! But no, I genuinely think this car, like, <laughs> I smile just as much driving this. Whoops, that wasn't the greatest heel toe. I smile just as much driving this as I do driving my Integra, like, legit. That's how fun this car is. It's awesome. Now, obviously, people my age aren't going to be buying new ones of these because they're like a good 26 grand, but if you can get a used one for sort of 14, 15 grand, it would make an absolutely fantastic car. You know for someone just looking for a little runabout that's really fun to drive you know I really can't see any reason why this wouldn't make a lot of sense I love it and I also have a Integra Type R you know and I genuinely think this is just as much fun it puts just as much of a smile on my face so yeah thank you very much for watching this episode of Kiwi Car Life and I'll look forward to seeing you guys again next week bye